a nurse is assessing a clinic patient with a diagnosis of hepatitis A. Which of the following is the most likely route of transmission? Sexual contact with an infected partner. Contaminated food. Blood transfusion. Illegal drug use. The correct answer is contaminated food. Hepatitis A is the only type that is transmitted by the fecal-oral route through contaminated food. HIV is a single-stranded, positive sense, linear RNA enterovirus of the picornaviridae family. In humans, viral replication depends on hepatocyte uptake and synthesis, and assembly occurs exclusively in the liver cells. Virus acquisition results almost exclusively from ingestion, for example, fecal-oral transmission. A leukemia patient has a relative who wants to donate blood for transfusion. Which of the following donor medical conditions would prevent this? A history of hepatitis C five years previously. Cholecystitis requiring cholecystectomy one year previously. Asymptomatic diverticulosis. Crohn's disease in remission. The correct answer is a history of hepatitis C five years previously. Hepatitis C is a viral infection transmitted through bodily fluids, such as blood, causing inflammation of the liver. Patients with hepatitis C may not donate blood for transfusion due to the high risk of infection in the recipient. A physician has diagnosed acute gastritis in a clinic patient. Which of the following medications would be contraindicated for this patient? Naproxen sodium, naproxen. Calcium carbonate. Clarithromycin, biaxin. Furosemide, Lasix. The correct answer is naproxen sodium, naproxen. Naproxen sodium is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug that can cause inflammation of the upper GI tract. For this reason, it is contraindicated in a patient with gastritis. Naproxen is used to relieve pain from various conditions such as headache, muscle aches, tendinitis, dental pain, and menstrual cramps. It also reduces pain, swelling, and joint stiffness caused by arthritis, bursitis, and gout attacks. The nurse is conducting nutrition counseling for a patient with cholecystitis. Which of the following information is important to communicate? The patient must maintain a low-calorie diet. The patient must maintain a high-protein slash low-carbohydrate diet. The patient should limit sweets and sugary drinks. The patient should limit fatty foods. The correct answer is that the patient should limit fatty foods. Cholecystitis, inflammation of the gallbladder, is most commonly caused by the presence of gallstones, which may block bile, necessary for fat absorption, from entering the intestines. Patients should decrease dietary fat by limiting foods like fatty meats, fried foods, and creamy desserts to avoid irritation of the gallbladder. A patient admitted to the hospital with myocardial infarction develops severe pulmonary edema. Which of the following symptoms should the nurse expect the patient to exhibit? Slow, deep respirations. Strider. Bradycardia. Air hunger. The correct answer is air hunger. Patients with pulmonary edema experience air hunger, anxiety, and agitation. Symptoms may also include coughing up blood or bloody froth, difficulty breathing when lying down, orthopnea, feeling of air hunger or drowning, this feeling is called paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea if it causes you to wake up one to two hours after falling asleep and struggle to catch your breath. A nurse caring for several patients in the cardiac unit is told that one is scheduled for implantation of an automatic internal cardioverter defibrillator. Which of the following patients is most likely to have this procedure? A patient admitted for myocardial infarction without cardiac muscle damage. A postoperative coronary bypass patient, recovering on schedule. A patient with a history of ventricular tachycardia and syncopal episodes. A patient with a history of atrial tachycardia and fatigue. The correct answer is a patient with a history of ventricular tachycardia and syncopal episodes. An automatic internal cardioverter defibrillator delivers an electric shock to the heart to terminate episodes of ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation.
This is necessary for a patient with significant ventricular symptoms, such as tachycardia resulting in syncope. A patient is scheduled for a magnetic resonance imaging MRI, scan for suspected lung cancer. Which of the following is a contraindication to the study for this patient? The patient is allergic to shellfish. The patient has a pacemaker. The patient suffers from claustrophobia. The patient takes antipsychotic medication. The correct answer is the patient has a pacemaker. The implanted pacemaker will interfere with the magnetic fields of the MRI scanner and may be deactivated by them. Patients with cardiac implantable electronic devices or CIED are at risk for inappropriate device therapy, device heating slash movement, and arrhythmia during MRI. These patients must be scheduled in a CIED blocked slot or scheduled with electrophysiology nurse or technician support. But nowadays MRI conditional cardiac implantable electronic devices are widely available. A nurse calls a physician with the concern that a patient has developed a pulmonary embolism. Which of the following symptoms has the nurse most likely observed? The patient is somnolent with decreased response to the family. The patient suddenly complains of chest pain and shortness of breath. The patient has developed a wet cough and the nurse hears crackles on auscultation of the lungs. The patient has a fever, chills, and loss of appetite. The correct answer is the patient suddenly complains of chest pain and shortness of breath. Typical symptoms of pulmonary embolism include chest pain, shortness of breath, and severe anxiety. The physician should be notified immediately. Clinical signs and symptoms for pulmonary embolism are nonspecific, therefore, patients suspected of having pulmonary embolism because of unexplained dyspnea, tachypnea, or chest pain or the presence of risk factors for pulmonary embolism must undergo diagnostic tests until the diagnosis is ascertained. A patient comes to the emergency department with abdominal pain. Workup reveals the presence of a rapidly enlarging abdominal aortic aneurysm. Which of the following actions should the nurse expect? The patient will be admitted to the medicine unit for observation and medication. The patient will be admitted to the day surgery unit for sclerotherapy. The patient will be admitted to the surgical unit and resection will be scheduled. The patient will be discharged home to follow up with his cardiologist in 24 hours. The correct answer is the patient will be admitted to the surgical unit and resection will be scheduled. A rapidly enlarging abdominal aortic aneurysm is at significant risk of rupture and should be resected as soon as possible. No other appropriate treatment options currently exist. Nurse Sarah is caring for four clients and is preparing to do her initial rounds. Which client should the nurse assess first? A client with diabetes being discharged today. A 35-year-old male with tracheostomy and copious secretions. A teenager scheduled for physical therapy this morning. A 78-year-old female client with a pressure ulcer that needs dressing. Change. The correct answer is a 35-year-old male with tracheostomy and copious secretions. The patient with an airway problem should be given the highest priority. The ABCs identifies the airway, breathing, and cardiovascular status of the patient as the highest of all priorities in that sequential order. Thanks for watching this video that will help you pass your nursing exams. If you enjoyed this video, sign up for free daily questions and other helpful nursing tips by clicking the link below.